pretty self-explanatory. Sure, I mean, it's the, you know, for, for those of you who don't know, it's nice the picture's up on the screen right now, the tanks to the right of the, what we call the primary weir observation house. So to the right of that building, those are the tanks where we're going to be replacing chain and flights on the primary settling tanks. We've already done a few tanks previously, uh, contract with the same contractor to replace the remaining chain and flights. Question. Uh, the chain I understand is having seen the operation, but I didn't understand where the word flight came from. Yeah, the, there's a the best way to use the word is a skimmer that skims the top and bottom of the of the tank um, to take photos off the <clears> top and sludge off the bottom. How long does that system typically last? I mean, it's usually usually 25 to 30 years. Really, that long. Any discussion on the consent agenda? A motion to approve the consent agenda. Just both items. Motion by Mr. Beal. Second. 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 Ms. Caldarelli. All in favor? Aye. 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 Moving along to new business. Mr. Carl, customer service migration. So we wanted to take the time to provide a uh, in I know we're in budget planning process, but we wanted to take the time this evening to brief the board on where we're at with respect to our customer care system upgrades. If you remember a few months ago, we noted that Greater Cincinnati Waterworks who currently provides our customer care system um, is getting out of customer care system business. So that partnership is going to end. So we had to go out to bid to, to find a new team to help build out our customer care uh, upgrade. We're about halfway through uh, the project, and we've answered some of the large questions about what might need to be updated, for example, account numbers, and we're going to have our communications manager, Mr. Robertson, give an update on where we're at uh, on the program, because it is public facing. We want the board to be apprised of where we're at and where we're going. So good evening, everybody. Um, Justin sort of saved me the trouble of explaining the background behind uh, how GCWW is getting out of the customer service business. And as you all are aware, we are upgrading our customer care system. So we wanted to take some time, give you some background on sort of how Alex your new customer service functions today, the parts that are transitioning, sort of a status as to how the project's going so far, and then also highlight some of the benefits that the new system is going to have. So if you look at the screen here, you'll see essentially four parties that are responsible right now for Alex Renew's customer service. You have GCWW, Greater Cincinnati Waterworks. Um, right now they have what they call a CCMB platform that, that covers billing, payment processing, um, our online portal, which is sort of the digital payment portal that you go to when you click through on alexrenew.com. And they also handle our call center services. So up until very recently, GCWW also handled our payment plans. Those have since transitioned to Promise, who you see here at the bottom of the screen. Um, so Promise now manages those payment plans. That's not necessarily part of the conversation at this point. Virginia American Water, I'm sure you all are aware, connects and disconnects basically water to customers in Alexandria. Uh, they share that information with us, and our system is directly connected to theirs. Um, they also handle our disconnections for non-payment as well. So where Alex Renew sort of fits in there is we coordinate all of those efforts between those groups. Um, we also implement all the policies and procedures that Alex Renew follows with each one of these parties. Uh, we handle all the reporting internally and the quality control of those reports and make sure that the data that we're getting is, is valid. Um, if you focus on just the Greater Cincinnati Waterworks piece here, uh, to the left of the screen, that's really the piece that's transitioning as part of this customer service migration. Okay, So that's billing, payment processing, call center services, uh, the online portal. That's all transitioning from GCWW to Enterprise Solutions Consulting, or ESC, as we more commonly refer to them. Uh, just a little background on ESC. They're really laser focused on providing customer service solutions for utilities across the country. 
that's their bread and butter. They only serve utilities. Uh, they come from an Oracle-based customer care system, which is nice to know because our system right now is Oracle-based, which makes the transition from one Oracle system to another much easier. Um, they do have some products that they allow us to sort of have input on and customize, including the portal, the bills, that sort of thing. So far, they've been outstanding to work with, incorporated all of our feedback, really good discussion. Um, they, offer, they also offer more payment options than GCWW does, um, including Google Pay, Apple Pay, PayPal, so just sort of another added benefit. When we started looking at this project, these are a few of the components that, that you want to plan for. Um, they are sort of in, in order of like sequencing uh, how they would roll out. But basically, you want to you want to be able to plan the project ahead of time so that you incorporate all of these things. And that includes data validation, transfer, user interface, system integrations. That's sort of where we're at in the project right now. We've covered most of these. And then next up, you have payment and billing processes, reports, and then finally you have to on top of the testing and training um, and customer communications. So just, I'm gonna breeze over these because we kind of cover them more in depth later in the presentation, but just to give you sort of an idea of what we looked at when we initially started the project. So I thought it would be nice to sort of highlight some of the things that are gonna stay the same with the system and some of the things that are gonna change. And I think what's gonna be really positive about this migration is that the things that our customers have told us they like consistently are essentially staying the same. And the things that they've asked for, a lot of them are kind of answered with this upgrade. So even though we're doing out of necessity because GCWW's decided to get out of the customer service building its current business, it's really gonna be a positive thing for our customers. So the first thing I wanna highlight is we get a lot of compliments on our, our bill format actually, like pretty frequently. So we worked with ESC to sort of keep that format consistent, and that way our customers aren't jarred by the transition and they, we don't get unnecessary complaints when we have positive feedback. Uh, they also handle our inserts uh, moving forward, and those won't change because we're generating the files that we're sending to, to uh, GCWW right now, and we'll do the same with ESC. So both our bill and the inserts will essentially remain the same for customers. Our call center services for all intents and purposes will be the same if you call in. They'll have the similar scripts, ESCs working with GCWW to sort of make sure that's a seamless transition. And maybe the biggest win out of this whole migration is that account numbers are changing over um, and they're gonna be consistent. So what that means basically is if account numbers had changed and customers had previously saved that information in their own banking institute, so say you make your payments through Truist or SunTrust, you save that account number. If we had to change our account numbers, moving forward, every customer would have to proactively change their account number or their payment would not process. So the fact that these are staying the same is a huge win for us. It means we'll absolutely have more payments come in without, without having to communicate that and change it out. So automatic bill pay is just seamless. So right now we believe that we can transition the auto pay option as well from Cooper, who's the current uh, payment provider as well. So there's sort of two things going on there that are, uh, that are both wins, but we know for sure the account number can transfer. Um, the new, the, oh yeah, sorry. Right there. Um, with the existing system, uh, you talked about new ideas, uh, but do you have a, a sense of the complaints, of where the complaints were historically? Had to be some. Yeah, yeah. So um, we tr we track complaints through sort of a number of ways because we tr we get them through via email. We also get them through the call center, and they share that information with us. And there's a few, I'll say, requests we've gotten. And actually, the next piece sort of covers one of the, the main complaints. The biggest request that we get is actually that we don't currently have credit card as an auto pay feature. So. Right now in GCWW, you can set auto pay, but you have to use a checking account. And this, when we move forward and we switch to ESC, you will be able to use a credit card, which is actually our number one complaint. So that's an awesome win for us. Um, another request we get very often is chat, which is also um, a new feature that will be delivered through ESC. If you log into the platform, you'll be able to chat with the rep live, which is a, a nice feature as well. Do we have 
losing her and still receive payments for calls. And, and the provider also has a, which, who handles what? So typically the calls, they actually go through what they call an IVR at the front desk. And when they click that they want customer service, it actually transfers them to GCW right okay. now, which provides call center services. If somebody comes into the office, then they see Hans. And occasionally somebody will try to bypass the whole call center system, basically. Hans will chat with them. But for the most part, the way the phone system is set up is to direct them to the call center. Okay. Uh, we also work with ESC to improve the functionality on both a phone and the computer. The new, the new uh, customer payment portal is really a great uh, addition as well. It's smooth. It looks great. Functions well. We've got a few additional features in there. And there's a notification for being able to tap anything. So it's, it's really a great update. And then the final thing I want to note is our hours actually are, are longer with ESC. So right now they're 7.30 to 5. Moving forward, they'll be 6 to 6. That's another uh, kind of nice benefit we get by switching to ESC. You know, this is a software set. Uh, is the vendor going to handle basically the software upgrades and glitches and things of that sort? ESC basically delivers the secure keys, which they manage the in-front of the room, all the way to the room. They manage basically the integration of their call center with the product itself, which is a really nice feature as well. It's sort of a, here you go, <clears throat> ready to use turnkey solution. It's like having a separate data department that's on the private side. And did they which, then which mail is, out the bills as well? Yes, they, so they mail out all the bills, and they handle any inserts that we just have the same file. Okay. In the first slide, you had promise. Is that an update or so prom makes arrangements? So promise handles our payment arrangements. They also are distributing LIWAP, which you you right. may remember from previous discussions. So we have to integrate promises payment arrangement data into the new S ESC platform. So they're on a lot of calls with us in that process. But they're actually the front-facing form that you would sign up for if you want a payment arrangement. So like from our website, you would go to Promise's website, create a payment arrangement. That information is then shared to ES, will be shared to ESC. Right so now. Promise is a, uh, a corporation of some type? Yeah. They're one of the third parties. OK. So this is sort of a, a timeline of where we are now. Um, it's broken down by sprints and phases. So when we began planning this project, uh, this was a recommendation by ESC as, long as, as well as Reptelis, and they recommended we break it down into sprints and phases that sort of run concurrently. Um, if you look at this chart, you can see we're sort of in this range here around May. We completed the preliminary planning technical upgrade. Right now, we're sort of wrapping up this, the customer portal, the stop start service, and the customer management piece. Um, next up, we have billion deduct meters, payments, collections, and then reporting and trading. Could you explain what the start stop service is? Sure. So, start stop service is anytime a customer begins service, basically with Virginia American Water, and then the way that information is transitioned to, to our customer service database. Um, and here at the bottom, you can see this is sort of the timeline for the communications campaign. Uh, best practice for a communications campaign around customer service is to start about 60 days out. We're going we're gonna to stretch that to 90. Start soft. We don't have a lot that we have to ask customers to change during this project, which is, which is a good thing. Um, but we still want to communicate any change for our customers so they're aware. So the next steps. Um, as I just kind of touched on, billing and payment collections and reports are starting next up on the sprints. The part that I want to touch on a little bit more on this slide is the training, the customer communication. Um, in my experience anyway, training has been essential for the, especially the customer service department, so that they're aware of how they can, they can 
answer questions moving forward <coughs> both procedures and just navigate like the new application. So one of the things that's great about ESC, and I kind of talked about this earlier, is ESC has sort of a uniform portal that we were able to customize a little bit, but the customer service center that works with ESC is very used to that portal. So they have basically variations of the same customer portal that they're extremely used to, adept at using, and when customers call, they'll be able to navigate it very easily, which makes training the customer service department a lot easier. Uh, as far as customer communication goes, like I said, we're gonna start 90 days out. We're gonna sort of start soft and then get a little bit more aggressive as we, as we get closer to that, uh, that deadline of go live. That's all I have for you all, if you have any questions. Um, by the way, I'm enormously relieved I did not know we were using the library. Oh. I, I thought we were installing our own CRM tool. No, 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 no. no. Oh, and so you answered Something we do not have to manage. We don't have to worry about Oracle upgrades. Yeah. No, no, no. no, no. Yeah. Um, a couple things. Um, service level uh, metrics and things are built into the contract for the ESC? Yes. So, and they've built in some, some additional uh, call center reps that we don't normally have right now. So we actually get additional reps through the transition, which is a nice touch. Uh, we'll continue to survey customers. We have metrics that they're supposed to be able to, like the number of calls they're supposed to be beforehand and that sort of thing. It's all built into the contract. Off the top of my head, I can't remember sort of the daily or weekly call volumes. Do you know off the top of your head, like this ballpark? Yeah, so it's... It's not it's, big numbers. No, it's really low. It's something like... 800 calls a month, I think, which, like, I, I work for an electric utility, I've worked for a customer service department there, we got, we got 800 calls a day, I would have been happy, that would have been a fun number, so, just that would, put that, it's 764 in the last month. 164? 764. 764, okay. We got 2,100 calls in a single day one time. And I would bet you that 764, Many of those are the same person calling all the time. For sure. I mean, I mean, the other thing we have going to our benefit in this project is that we have, there's 300,000 customers, but there's only about 30,000 account holders. So you don't have that many people that are going to call in because of this. That's why our call volume is so much lower than, than other utilities as well. And what is the nature of the call? Just you know, like questions about the bill. Usually it's a big you question. Much, you know, really use this much water? And yeah. The average call time matters is 30 seconds. Yep. Okay. Did I use as much water as most of you did? Any questions? Oh, Suzanne. Um, what's the uh, change in the cost for converting to a different provider? So actually, in the long run, we'll save a little bit of money. There's an initial upfront cost, and then it's about $200,000 less a year, I think. How much is the contract? Um, I believe, I don't, I don't know the answer to that offhand, because I'd have, I'd have to double check. So one, one final question. Here. ESC, I've not, never heard of them, but I suspect they pretty good business. Any idea of other customers they have, other utilities? Yeah, there? so they, the, la the last organization they just launched was uh, the city of Chattanooga. They have a few large city clients as well. There's, they basically provide us a map. They have over 30 utility uh, clients across the country. So you can do some right. In many different time zones as well. Oh yeah, for sure. And they're located again where? They're located in and 66. Very good reason. Any questions? Um, just one last one. They don't use uh, call centers that are offshore. Not offshore. No. Okay. They're in the states. I can't remember off the top of my head which state it's in. They're not out of California in the call center in this case. Sometimes you might go to a call center that someone is barely speaking. No, no, no. <laughs> it's really frustrating. It's within the state. Okay. 
but I can still add. Mumbai. <laughs> Very good. Questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving right on to new business. Um, we are in the middle of debt ceiling crisis. It's going to be perennial, and we have to respond to it. So, Mr. Carl, you want to take us through the line of credit financing option? Sure. Back, uh, most of the board was here back in 2021 when we put our $30 million line of credit in place to help fund. Um, construction activities on River Renew in case we weren't able to draw on one of the loans. Uh, remember, the loans came in in February 2021, you know, a few months after we issued notice to proceed in the tunnel project. So we had the ability to, to draw on the line of credit to, as a stopgap to get from our notice of award through the first couple of months of construction. Uh, what we're proposing to do, looking ahead, um, I guess the important thing to note is we're finalizing the draws on our $186 million Virginia Clean Water Revolving Loan Fund. Um, we're requisitioning the last $12 million of that revolving loan fund now to help fund river new construction. So we'll be finished completely with the state revolving loan fund money, which means the rest of the project we need to transition over to our $320 million, $321 million with you alone, which is through the EPA and through the federal government. Our concern, and this is a extra precaution we're taking, is that were there to be a government shutdown, not us, not the US government hitting the, the debt ceiling capacity, but if there were a shutdown, the concern is we would not be able to draw on WIFIA to pay for construction activities which need to keep moving forward, stay on schedule. So what we're proposing to do is, as an uh, emergency situation, is extend that line of credit from $30 million to $60 million to give us the flexibility, worst case scenario that we needed to draw on it, to be able to keep construction moving. The, we're not anticipating needing to do that, but we want to have that available if needed. Uh, just to give you some idea where we're at right now on cash, you know, we've got around, you know, 55 million right now of cash that we're, we're spending on River Renew somewhere around 8 million a month currently on construction. So that additional line would be only used if for some reason we went, went, ran out of cash and the government was shut down for an extended period. The last shutdown was uh, two months. Um, so we, again, don't anticipate needing to use it. We just want to have it available if I would like to mention in that the current line has about a balance of 22 million on it. So we don't have, won't have a full 60 million. We'll have somewhere around $38 million to use. Um, and if we were to spend down all the cash, it would, you know, that would last us about four to five months after spending the cash down. If we had a government shutdown for five months, there will be a lot bigger problem. Correct. Correct. Yes. And this is a very quick question. It's also nice to have this facility. This financing facility. As uh, the people administering with you, are they advising you all to do this? Um, other utilities do likewise? Our mm -hmm. own and uh, our own uh, internal team. We we looked at it and we wanted to be able to manage the risk were there to be in a, a, mm -hmm. a shutdown because we've experienced a shutdown once, mm -hmm. and we just didn't want to have to go through that again and not be able to draw on with you. We did reach out to uh, our financial consult consultant Sarah Sarah Fry with with PFM. You know she helped us with the resolution that's presented before you this mm -hmm. evening, and you know also advised us you know, not to have to come back to the board again. Once we get through this pinch point with the government knowing what's gonna happen with the debt ceiling, um, without board approval, we can re we can take that line and reduce it back down to 30 million without coming back to the board. And that would be the plan. Once we get through what happens in June and July, um, we then have the capability, I have the authority then to, if approved, 
reduce that line back down to 30 minutes because there is a there is a small fee associated with carrying uh, open balance. It's 0.15 percent on on the open balance. So we're 0.15. So we're somewhere around $5,700 a month for having that open line currently. If we were extended to 60 million, if if we have more than half of the credit used on the line, then that. Explain a little bit the, uh, how the interest rate is calculated. It's eighty percent. It's eighty percent of the uh, secured overnight financing rate, plus an additional 042 percent. So right now we're at somewhere around four point six two percent on the interest rate. Uh, historical average of this line for the last. This type of line for us has been around 1.6 percent. It's creeping up, obviously. It's you know, it's so kind of like the past history. That is right. Those so low interest rates we're never seeing again. Right. I think what our what we anticipate is it could go up to a little over five percent before before going back down. That's that's what our financial consultant is advising currently with respect to looking looking ahead. You know, average 1.6 could go up to a little over. Five, that would be the peak before it comes before it comes back down. And the way this resolution is written, if we get through the debt ceiling with no shutdown, you can instantly drop it back down to thirty million. Correct. And then the, what we would do then is draw them with the end pay off the remaining balance. We're still cleaning up things from from a previous finance but the previous financial group at Oxford News. So we're we're going we what we would do is then draw with you pay off that remaining balance and get it back down to zero and keep it open for the duration of, of its life, just in case we need it. Yep. And we can't draw from with you until we finish drawing on from the- No, we actually just, we literally got our, right before the meeting, our first $12, $12 million from with you. Oh. So it took two days. So very, very uh, quick compared to, DEQ took a little bit longer with you, it took two days. I don't, think so, it's, I don't think it's officially in our bank, but we got it approved. So we started drawing them with you already. So in order in order to kind of prepare for this, we looked at two things. We looked at, we drew as much as we could on clean water revolving loan fund. We started drawing them with you to get as much cash in the bank as possible in case we do have this shutdown. We've got a, a good chunk of change in the bank to keep construction moving on, on the terminal. This is just a backup, do a backup. You know, the other source of money is the ARPA dollars with DEQ. Where do we stand on getting that into motion? Um, so good news on that as well since the last board meeting. The grant agreement was sent by DEQ to the Attorney General. Um, they're now just waiting on the grant agreement to come back to DEQ before they send it to us for signature. How long did it take? It's gone, according to our, according to DEQ, it's, it's gone pretty quick in the past. So they don't, you know, we're thinking weeks. At the most, a few weeks. Really sign quicker than just a couple of weeks might yeah. help us, depending on how the club, if there's a clawback yeah, provision, yeah. and well, they define it, the degree which we've signed it and it got a signed agreement to the state, is adds another pair of suspenders to our it does. protection system. We, um, we're not the only utility that asked about the clawback to DEQ. Um, DEQ has stated to us that those funds are you know, secured, they're DEQ funds. And the only funds that would be clawed back are those that weren't appropriated to a specific organization within the state. But since those have been appropriated, the loan manager at DEQ has advised us that it, there's no chance for those funds to get clawed back. We also asked our financial consultant as well for her advice on it, Sarah Fry with PFM. Uh, same advice from her that it, there's not a chance for those funds to, to get clawed back at, at present. They have been dispersed by Treasury to the state. Correct. They, so DEQ, to give you know, to answer that question, has already worked through the Treasury Department of the state. That was a holdup, getting the documentation in line for Treasury. That gave them the ability to release the grant agreement for review by the Attorney General before they send it over to Oxford News for, for execution. So DEQ has the 
cash. The state has the cash. Correct. Already. Yeah, Correct. Which is ARPA. That's the way some of our bikes work. Correct. Mr. Jenks, did you get all of your questions tonight? Thank you. Would you like to make the motion to approve the resolution? Well, the resolution is before us tonight, which authorizes the uh, CEO to proceed to execute the line of credit. Outcomes update, Mr. Carr. Um, just maybe pointing out if anybody does want to follow the customer calls, we always report them out on the second page of the CEO report, so they're on that, the top of the page. How many customer calls are received for customer service each month? Um, not much to update on the CEO report, but with the revenue dashboard, wanted to touch on a few items. Uh, noting overall on page two, we're forty-one percent complete overall on the project progress. Um, we are still behind on the waterfront tunnel and as a result also at uh, the Alex Renew wastewater plant, we're building up pump stations. So those are delays that are both on the critical path due to the, due to the late start with our, with our tunneling operations. The good news I think with respect to tunneling, when we think about these jobs, we plan for 40, around 40 feet per day production on the Tunneling operations are, are reaching 100 to 120 foot feet per day, which are which is really solid from a production standpoint. Um, we've been in the tunnel with the community, uh, with our tunnel tours and taking different agencies in and out of our tunnel. The tunnel looks great. We're at 3,000 feet uh, to date. So we must be well beyond Route One. Yes, we're getting ready to go through our um, St. Mary's property that we have an agreement with. Do we go through St. Mary's property or we go down Church Street? On St. Mary's property. It's okay. vacated. Church Street was vacated. Church. Yeah, but under former Church Street. Uh, Mr. Carr, what's the impact of, of that kind of speed on the crews that are on the ground? It's a big difference between 40 feet a day and 100 feet on the crew. So what we're seeing is, you know, with, the, with that speed, we're seeing an uptick in traffic at the site. You know, I think we're at 120 trucks a day getting them off, off site. That's been the biggest impact. Yeah, that's what, I mean, that's what we plan for. But we're seeing, we're seeing that peak now. They, yeah, they go down Eisenhower and then cross the bridge to, to landfill. Help me with this. The ring is four, four feet full. So you're, you're doing 30 rings a day? That's incredible. So you don't have any supply chain problems as far as the manufacturers of rings? No, the, manuf the rings are being manu manufactured in Brandywine, Maryland. Trailer has a partnership with another company to, to build tunnel segments. They're being precast there. The biggest challenge was getting the forms for the segments delivered during COVID. That's the same outfit that did it for or is doing it for DC water. Yeah. Uh, so they have a continuous supply or can they come No, up well, the segments are custom built for our machine and our tunnel side. But I mean, they have a supply. They've got a, a segment plan, a concrete plan. Okay, but I mean, they, they give you good supply, so uh, you're going faster than oh, yeah. what you most, schedule. Yeah, most of them are either sitting here on site okay. or they're sitting in the yard at the, at the segment plant. Speaking of the tours, um, the feedback I've gotten, I was the only one in, in my life for one, uh, was very positive. Uh, have you gotten other feedback? Yeah, so we had tunnel tours two weekends ago. We had over 100 people come out from the community overwhelmingly positive feedback. Um, we are now getting requests for additional tours. 
Um, so we're, right now we're not accepting tours at this time from, from the community, but it, I think for us, it was really helpful for us to have our staff there to show the community invest, the investment they're making in healthier waterways, because these are things that are sight unseen when they're done. So it was pretty neat to watch people walk back in the environmental center and see the look on their faces and get their feedback regarding the tours. I took the tour. I tagged along with my wife to the newspaper to make the spot. I was enormously impressed by two things, and, and I, I've got to share. Um, both the, the amount of work that has been done in a short period of time. When you see that shack and how big it is, in fact, it's one of four. And then you see the rings and all the equipment is, is crammed together like a Swiss watch, like the pieces. There's no room to spare. But also the, the enthusiasm of the team. I mean, everyone is just positive, energetic, proud of what they're doing. It was, it was infectious. There was, my understanding is there was a reporter there um, asking some of the participants for their feedback. And um, have you seen anything come out publicity wise yet? Yeah, there, yeah, there are two articles. One was written in Alexandria Living. It didn't get any quotes, though, but that was the reporter that was there that was asking for quotes. And then the other one, we re reviewed an article from the Zebra you know, promoting the Thomas Wilson. Numbers are on the website. Yeah, all the photos are up there. Um, so we are still waiting on council to give us a date for your tours. Um, it'll be a little bit different than what we did with the, the community. We gave it a go today with, with uh, Richmond DPU was here today. Um, the heading's too far to walk to now, so we're using a personnel carrier on the multi-service vehicles to get people to the heading and back worked out well today. We take about five or six people at a time. So we're just waiting to hear back from council on the dates that we, we had previously provided. As soon as we have the dates from council, we'll, we'll share them with the board, but we're still shooting for those July dates. I think it's important to note too on page five, we're at, you know, we're spent 309 million. So we're past half spent on 615. And then the last page of the River New Dashboard just gives an update that we're in full production mode. Remember, we're, we're a month behind with reporting our documents. Um, while we're on River New, we did also want to mention that we had a, a meeting with Senator Servell on April 27th to provide an update on the schedule delay. Uh, so we provided Senator Servell with a uh, you know, 30 to 40 minute presentation. He asked questions throughout, very supportive throughout the presentation. Um, the intent would be at some point, not this legislative session, but next year to get the um, milestone extended. So we'll have to get a so somebody from the House or Senate to, so, to write, a, write a draft bill and then go from there. Yes, next year. Not the one that we're currently in. Yeah. So that we'd start probably laying that groundwork. It's election season, so it's we're in primaries through June. So after June, you know, we can sort of try and get that back on everyone's radar. Uh, Mr. Carl, I know there's a SAG meeting coming up on Thursday. What would be the content of that? Just a general project update. We have yet to talk to the SAG in person regarding the delay, so we'll spend some time on that. And we're also going to talk about the rates like we did with Council Board Work Group okay. a few weeks ago. Similar presentation to Council Board Work Group. Urge board members to attend if you can. We are in person only. And then financial report, One, just one thing to note. Um, we, did, we have been doing some outreach around delinquencies. As we mentioned, we had sent out letters to all of the delinquent accounts. We've been making calls. Um, we're also getting 
ready to put out door hangers. Um, in the last five months, this is the first month we've seen delinquencies stabilize. Um, so the bunny actually went down a very, very small amount, but it's we're not sure if that's due to our letters or our outreach, but we did see them stabilize at around 900 and change for delinquencies. There are only, it looks like there are only 91 accounts that are on active payment plans, and it looks like there are over a thousand that are delinquent. Are we expecting that number to rise, or do we just not have enough money to do it? We're not sure. Um, again, I think for, for us, understanding why the accounts are delinquent, you know, that our, our data shows that it's just they haven't been paid. Um, the payment plans are largely commercial accounts. There are larger commercial accounts where we do have payment plans, um, but unclear. Any other questions on the outcomes report? Motion to adjourn. What? Okay. One more thing. One more thing. Um, we had sent out an invite to have our board retreat on January sixth. I'm not sure if that worked for the board. You may have got an invite from Ms. Huff regarding January sixth, the Saturday, to host our board retreat. We wanted to. We, and we do a dinner the night prior with, you know, Mr. Dickinson's resignation. We wanted to give a new board member some time before we had a retreat to get to understand the, at least have a briefing on on Alex Renew and understand our mission, vision, values before we jump into a, you know, charter and a refresh of it. I just like to add, we had the award ceremony. Thank you, staff. We've got a little bit of publicity, but not much. At least a picture. Yeah, we got one. It's landed in the cat. It got some good action, really good traction. Yeah. The entire group from Mount Vernon Trail Association then came out uh, for a tunnel tour at the end of the day on on Saturday. And we were able to get quite a number of city council members there, and also Don Byer showed up. So we brought Don Byer, who's the next year old, into the picture. Yes. <laughs> Always good. So politicians won't miss a picture. Anything else? Uh, no. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. You'll note that the time on the agenda says. Adjourn 645, and it is characteristic precision from Alex. This train runs on time. Just for Saturday, we did pass around some materials for, for Saturday, so you have them in your hard copy. Any predictions on how many members of the public will show up? In the past, it has been. <laughs> we did about 10 years ago. We changed the name from ASA to Alex We thought it was a corporate takeover. Yep. As soon as we answered the question, that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Just come to Saturday. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the enjoy the nice weather and Long the game service. service. Hmm? Long, 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 Long. Nine a.m. Get here before nine. That's right. Saturday nine a.m. Are you asking? Nine a.m. Quarter hour. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Wet weather partnership. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. From the Aqualove. Good to see you. You're interested? So you got an application. No, they have an online form. The other thing is community, community support. A boy and a girl? Two girls. Now, are you, you, you live up to West Indian Hills. Yeah. So yeah. You know, Alan, the romance by Jeff. Yeah. 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 General accounting office. He's been very active. And, um, <laughs> I like. I for a moment. I I don't think like, it was my brother. He may have a PhD like, there was a in moment where political science or something like that. Like, Please just be one. I know he lives. He's lived at Southern Towers for years. Thank you. It's your second one? Yes. It does. I have a two year old. She turns two on Sunday. Community organizations are you part of I've heard that this is like, if I waited any longer, she'd hit her terrible And then I'd be like, so, so I've heard that this is like the best time. Oh, yeah, yeah. But Alexandra, the, the job I've, I've always seen that I and they understand I mean, that they want to make it at least right. <laughs> the system will blow yeah. up. Yeah. But um, so I've so lived here like, in 10, almost 50 years. Most, I was reading about, like, what's the effect of the two-year-old right now. That's more. 
and it's like oh, they want to be yeah. rebellious. Yeah. They, yeah. Want yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. they want to yeah. yeah. drop yeah. things that really yeah. yeah. like how what things yeah. like the cause yeah. effect yeah. of things. And it, I'm like, it's just it's sometimes helpful to read something and then it, it's you're like it's kind of annoying. <laughs> it's just really Look at it. But then you read it, and you're like, well, it's, it's a developmental milestone. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Someone check on that guy. And as you can see, you know, we ask a few questions. The budget is our primary job. So how uh, so I can't know now I got another Are they going on vacation? Alexandria, and Alexandria is a very diverse, dynamic community. And me sitting up here for 11 years, I'm saying, hey, wait a second. You did a great job. Uh, yes. We need diversity. We need different communities. And younger generations have to come forward. And the strategic planning, I know, that ought to be by the university. Set out a plan. And some of the issues coming up, they're going to be tough ones. PFACs. That could be where we have a lot of But you know, that, that will affect every composting operation. So, how far are they going to go? I, I don't think. I got to, I wonder what a soil incorporation, I, I don't know. I don't know, just 